In this episode of AI DevTools today, we are going to learn on how you can build AI agents using Google's AI Agent Development Kit along with the MongoDB's Vector Search. And to talk about that, we have Vera, who's a senior developer advocate of MongoDB and also a Google GDP. Hi, Mira, and welcome to the AI DevTools Today show. Hi, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. All right, Mira, thank you so much. I know you have a lot of things loaded, so I won't take much of your time. So I'm going to add your screen to the stream now, and then we can learn on how we can build AI agents uh, using Google's AI Agent Development Kit. Yeah, let's jump right into it. So I'm going to take just 15 minutes, and we're going to build a, an agent together. So to summarize what an agent is, very shortly, it is an AI system that um, uses a large language model to reason through a problem, create a plan to solve this problem, and then execute and iterate on the plan with the help of a set of tools. And for use developers, when I say a set of tools, I just mean some external APIs, some external functions calling something outside of the scope of the LLM. And I was thinking of, a good use case for building an agent. And I thought that maybe I want to optimize or um, take away the pain from some mundane, mundane everyday task. And I do grocery shopping online, but it's still quite repetitive and I do the same thing every week. So I decided to build a yep. so I decided to build a grocery shopping agent. So together we'll rebuild this very simple agent. Of course, it's not gonna interact with the real e-commerce, but they have the database for an e-commerce, they have the inventory. So we will simulate this, um, this marketplace. So the objectives for our agent will be to understand and execute natural language tasks. I want to interact with it as though it is a chatbot. So I should understand it when I say add milk, eggs, and flour to my cart. I want to bake a cake. So when I say that, it should be able to find the appropriate ingredients in the product in the inventory of the uh, shop and add them to the cart. Also, um, I should be able to have access to my past orders. So if I say add my usual weekly groceries to the cart, it should fetch my previous orders and replicate this, uh, this order. And there will be a bunch of data that will be um, collected over time as I use this agent and as I make groceries online. So if I say how much they spend on X last month, I want the agent to be able to access this data and analyze it for me. Of course, these are all tasks that you can do manually through some UI. And my goal will, is to well, optimize this process to augment my experience and to use the AI agent to make my life easier. This is the architecture for the agent that we will build. So we have input, we are interacting with a large language model, the model creates a plan, and then our agent executes this plan. You will see this action and result here. Uh, the action is usually calling a tool or uh, referring to the memory. And based on the result of the action, our agent will call the LLM again and maybe repeat this process until we have a satisfying answer. So the input, as we said, will be natural language. And the first thing the agent will do is call the model to create a plan for solving this task. The first action that the, the plan will have is using a tool to find products in our database. So we need to find these products. Then after these products are found, our agent will call the LLM again and uh, the LLM will decide if these products are sufficient and if it should proceed with the next steps. They are, so apparently the agent now needs to call another tool to add the relevant products to the cart. So we execute this tool, the products are successfully added to the cart. This is the result from calling the tool. Uh, with this result, the agent calls the LLM once again. And now the LLM can see that everything was successfully executed and it can return the appropriate response to the user. What are the components of this system? So we have the model, of course. Um, most important part of our agent is still the large language model. And for this demo, I'm going to use Gemini 2.0 Flash. It is a pretty good and fast model. So it's appropriate for uh, an agent that 
calls it multiple times. So, of course, there will be some latency involved because the agent calls the model multiple times, but we still want it to be quick enough. After that, we have the tools. Now, the tools, they are very understandable for us as developers. So, the tools, uh, we can um, make them more granular. We can look at them as functions. So, the first uh, tool that we need is finding similar products in the product database. And then the second tool that we need is another function that can add products to the cart. Now, how are we going to implement these two functions? Finding similar products, and yeah, of course, we, we can call them multiple times if we have multiple products. How do we implement them? Find similar products. Uh, this tool, this function, needs to be able to parse natural language um, to take a, a parse natural language query. So we're going to pass in eggs or uh, flour or baked goods. And then the implementation will be querying the product database. So we need to go and check the actual database and find the appropriate products. Uh, it will return MongoDB documents because our product database will be MongoDB Atlas. And here's how we can simply implement it. So if we have a simple keyword, such as eggs, then the implementation can be as simple as directly querying the database with X. This will return all products that have X in their product name. Uh, but this is not how users will interact with the tool, because natural language can be pretty ambiguous. So if we prompt it with sweet treats and we try to find that in the database, we're not going to get any matches, because we're trying to use keyword match and that's not going to work because uh, the user is going to use ambiguous language. So how do we implement this? We need some sort of search that is appropriate for natural language. And this is where vector search comes in. So when we use vector search, we're not searching for exact keywords. We are searching based on the intent or the meaning of the user. So if the user searches for sweet treats and we search using vector search, we should get back KitKat, Donut, and Cupcake. As you can see, we don't have an exact keyword match, but these are semantically close to the sweet treats query. How does that work? Well, the core of the vector search are the so-called vector embeddings. These embeddings are numerical, multidimensional representations of some piece of information. And they are supposed to capture the semantic qualities of the data. So when we generate these vectors, which are large arrays with numbers, and we try to plot them on a vector space, on a, like a plot, we should find that um, objects that are similar to each other will have vectors that are close to each other. So if we have our sweet treats and we compare this vector and we find the closest vectors around it, we should get back KitKat. Similarly, if we search for Apple, we'll get this vector, we'll find the closest ones in the space around it, and we should get back orange and other fruit. Now, how are these vectors generated? Well, we need an embeddings model. We will use an embeddings model from Google Cloud's Vertex AI. And this embeddings model is pretty much a black box. So we pass in the object, the uh, piece of text, the image, the video. The embeddings model generates a vector for us, and we use it. So when we compare this vector to the other vectors in our product database, they should end up close to each other um, if they are close semantically. All right, let's, let's jump into the demo. So this is the demo that we will use. Uh, it is on GitHub, it's free. And if you use the link in GitHub, you can actually sign up for MongoDB Atlas and create the cluster for free. Uh, and there is also a script that allows you to import the data, the product data, uh, and I'll show you how the data looks like. So we have the cards. Currently, there is nothing in our cards collection. This is MongoDB Atlas, by the way. So there is nothing in our cards collection because we haven't used the agent so far. And then in the inventory, we have a whole bunch of products. So as long as it loads, we should see here that we have different products. We have actually 27,000 documents. 
and they already have vector embeddings, so they are ready for us to use vector search. And this is how they look like. So we have our categories, we have the name of the product, we have subcategories, the brand, and a lot of other information. This is a data set that I found for free on Kaggle, and it's free to use, and it's perfect for this demo. Now let's jump into the actual implementation of the agent. I'm using Google Cloud's Agent Development Kit, and for the vector search, I'm using MongoDB Atlas Vector Search. So I use the ADK, or Agent Development Kit, COI to generate this project. And uh, when, when I did that, I ended up with some structure here. And the agent pi is my actual agent. So this is where I added my implementation. I also added the script for creating the embeddings if you want to do it from scratch. And this is the data set that you can import. There are all of the instructions are, the, are in the readme of the repo. So you can, you can just follow it and replicate it yourself. So let's jump into the agent. You can see that this is a Python file. ADK also supports Java, if that's uh, closer to what you're used to work with. And I know they're, they're working on an API for uh, Node.js. OK, so what do we have here? We have some environment variables that define my Google Cloud project, the location of the project, the database connection string, the database name, the collection name, and just some generic um, environment variables. Then I have a function that takes care of generating the vector embeddings. So when we pass in the user query, sweet treats, we can't compare the text sweet treats with vectors. We need to convert sweet treats also to a vector and then perform the vector search. So how, what is the implementation? I initialize my Vertex AI project, Vertex AI from Google Cloud, and then I initialize the text embedding model from Google Cloud as well. And using this instance of the model, I say get embeddings. I pass in the user query, sweet treats, and I return the generated vector. Now, this is the vector that we will use to perform vector search. And where do we use that? We use it in the find similar products tool, which is a function, as simple as that. We have some doc string describing what the function does. The agent will actually read this doc string and it will understand how to use the function. And then we have the implementation. So the implementation, very simple. We initialize our MongoDB client using the PyMongo library. Then we generate vector embeddings using our generate embeddings function that we just saw for our user query. And then this is the implementation of the vector search. We use a MongoDB aggregation pipeline. We have one stage that does the vector search using the index that I have already created. And we have one more stage that projects the fields that we want the query to return. So we are actually excluding the vector embeddings because they are a pretty large array. And we don't want this to go over the network. We don't need it. And I exclude a few other details here. Finally, I call collection aggregate. I pass in the aggregation pipeline, and I get back a list of documents. And I return the documents. So this is the implementation of the first tool that we have. The second tool is adding documents to the cart. So it is even simpler. So we have the product name and the user name, the user for whose cart we are adding the product. We instantiate the client. Then we fetch the product database. We find the product in the product database. Then we find the card for this user. And if the card doesn't exist, we actually will create it for, for this user. And then we add the product to the array, to the list of products. We add it appended at the end. This is what add to set does. Finally, how do we build the agent? So we start with using this agent class from ADK. We name the agent. Uh, we specify the model that we need to use. We give it some short instructions. Of course, in a production agent, these instructions will be much more compre comprehensive. And then we pass in the list of tools, as simple as that. 
Now I want to show you how it works. So if I run ADK Web, ADK is the Agent Development Kit CLI. And if I open it, you will see that actually we have a pre-built user interface. Oh, wait, I actually need to run it in the root folder, the folder of the project. So if I open it, you'll see that we have a pretty nice UI that is really useful for uh, development purposes. So if I say hi, the agent should reply. And we say, we say, hello, I'm the online groceries agent. How can I help you with your shopping needs today? And we see also the trace of events here. Uh, find me sweet treats. Now the agent will call the find similar products tool and we can actually see what the tool returned. We have this function call and the result that was returned. And then we get also the answer from the, from the agent. So the agent called the LLM with this result from the tool and the LLM generated this user friendly re response for us. So would you like to add any of these to your card? If so, please tell me which ones and what is your username? So just to remind you, we don't have anything in the card yet. So if I add something to the card, the agent should actually change the database. It should insert it in the card document here. It should create the card document and then add the product. Okay, so what is my username? My username is Mira, add Motipack to my card. Let's see if it does it. Okay, so it called up to cart. Uh, it looks successful. Let's see if something actually happened. So let's refresh this collection. And we have a document here. Yep. And we have Motipack. And I actually don't have an idea what Motipack is. So <laughs> you guys should educate me. All right. Yeah, that was the short demo that I wanted to show you today. Wow, Mira, that was pretty quick. And I really loved, you know, on how you squeezed in both the AI agent development kit, you know, uh, and, and also the MongoDB uh, vector search. Uh, for someone yeah. getting started with my, uh, vector search, Mira, you know, where, where can we direct them to learn more, more about it? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say just go to the uh, repository. So I'm going to open the repo over here. And if you go to Atlas and sign up for a free account, you can actually create um, a free cluster that allows you to perform vector search. So check it out, just use this demo, and it also guides you through creating the uh, vector search index, and it guides you through implementing the uh, vector search. So yeah, everything is in here. Perfect. And, and, I, and I did. Uh, remember that in in your session you did say that you know uh, the agent development kit you know you can either use uh, Python or Java. Yeah. I mean, it was very interesting to hear you said Java. Is there no way we have an option for JavaScript? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, not yet. I know that they're working on it. I hope we have it soon. Yeah, I'm of course also a <laughs> JavaScript developer, so I would prefer to use JavaScript for this. Perfect. I think, you know, as we say, you know, 2025 is the uh, year for agents. So I think it was, yeah. it really makes sense to go ahead and learn about AI agents and how you can build it and get started. Uh, it was great to have you up on the show, Mira. Any final thing you want to say before we wrap it up? No, I think it's, yeah, it's really easy to get started with. Also try some vibe coding uh, an agent and yeah, it's it's going to work. It's, it's going to be a great way to learn how to use it. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much, everyone who's watching this show. Uh, this was the very first episode of AI Dev Tools today, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.